In this video, we're going to continue to work on problems involving area between curves from section 2.1. So this problem asks us to find the area of this region in two different ways. So we're going to slice the area vertically, and then we're also going to slice it horizontally. Now we should get the same answer either way, but this is going to sort of show us the differences between those two different methods. So let's start by slicing vertically. So when we slice vertically, we're thinking about a typical vertical rectangle. So it's got a skinny delta x width, and the top of that rectangle and the bottom of that rectangle define the function that we're going to be integrating. In this case, the top function and the bottom function are both my parabola x equals y squared. But remember that when we're slicing vertically, we're going to be integrating with respect to x. So the general format of our integral is going to be the top function minus the bottom function, and then we're integrating with respect to x, which means the functions that we're integrating have to be solved for y. So when we take x equals y squared and solve that for y, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of x. And so my top function is going to be the positive square root of x, and my bottom function is going to be negative square root of x. So the function that I'm integrating is radical x minus minus radical x. What about the bounds on my integral? Well, the left bound, or the bottom bound, is going to be the leftmost x value of my region, and the right bound is going to be the rightmost x value on my region. Now, I can tell that my area here starts at the origin, 0, 0, and ends here at x equals 9, which means I'm going to be integrating from 0 to 9. So this is the integral that I'm going to be working out to find the area of this region. So this works out to be the integral from 0 to 9, 2 times the square root of x, dx. We can think of square root of x as x to the 1 half. So when we integrate, we take the anterior derivative. Our 2 is still there. We raise the power up by 1, so adding 1 to 1 half gives us 3 halves. And then we divide by 3 halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And then we're going to plug in 9, plug in 0, and subtract. So that gives us 4 thirds, and then 9 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves. 9 to the 3 halves is 27, so that's 4 thirds times 27, which works out to be 36. Now what about slicing horizontally? When we slice horizontally, we're thinking about a skinny horizontal rectangle. It's got a little height delta y, and then we're thinking about the right end of that rectangle minus the left end of that rectangle. That's going to tell us the width of that rectangle. So we're slicing horizontally. Our integral is going to be the right function minus the left function integrated with respect to y. Now in this case, this integral is a little bit easier to set up because my right function is x equals 9 and my left function is x equals y squared. What's a little bit more challenging in this direction is that I need to figure out my bounds on my integral, which are the lower and upper values of y that begin and end this region. So in other words, I need to know where are these intersection points. So all that all I have to do is set these two functions equal to each other. I've got x equals y squared, I've got x equals 9, so to solve I set those equal to each other and I get y equals plus or minus 3. So this is clearly the y value is negative 3 and this is clearly a point where the y value is positive 3 and so that's my integral goes from negative 3 to positive 3 and now we're ready to go. We take the integral of 9, we get 9y, antiderivative of y squared is 1 third y cubed, we're going to plug in negative 3, we're going to plug in positive 3 and subtract, and this will also work out to be 36. So not too hard to do either way, but showing you both of the different ways to integrate this function. So here's another example where we're given a picture of the region and we're asked to find the area. Now we're given two functions that are both solved for y y equals x cubed over 2 and y equals x squared over 2 plus x, so it makes sense to try to integrate this one by slicing vertically. The wrinkle here, the thing that's going to make this one a little bit more challenging, is that which function is on top changes as I go from left to right. So I've got two different sort of pieces of area that I need to find. So when it says the total area, in this case I'm going to have to break that up into two separate problems. I'll call this problem a1 and I'll call this uh, area a2. So for a1, the red function, which is my cubic function, so this is my cubic function f of x equals x cubed over 2, and then the blue function, which is g of x, is x squared over 2 plus x. So for the a1 area, the red function f is on top, and the blue function g is on the bottom. But for a2, they switch. 
the blue functions on top and the red functions on the bottom. So I'm going to have to set up two separate integrals here. So a1 is going to be the integral, and I haven't figured out the bounds yet, but that's on my to-do list. But the top function is the red function, which is x cubed over 2 minus the bottom function, which is x squared over 2 plus x. Now, what about those bounds? Well, we need to find the intersection points, and actually we need to find all three of these intersection points. So that means we need to set these two functions equal to each other and solve. We're going to get x cubed over 2 equals x squared over 2 plus x. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of those fractions. And then let's move everything over to the left-hand side. So we get x cubed minus x squared minus 2x equals 0. And then if we factor, we get x times x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0, which means we have three intersection points, negative 1 comma something, 0 comma something, although we can probably tell that that's the origin, 0 comma 0, and then 2 comma something. We don't need to know the y values, so we're not bothering to figure those out. So for a1, a1 is going to start at x equals negative 1 and go up to x equals 0. a2 is going to be the integral that starts at 0 and goes to 2, but again, the functions have switched. So the top function here is x squared over 2 plus x, and the bottom function is x cubed over 2. So now all we have to do is figure out these two integrals and add them together. So this first integral, when we work it out, works out to be 5 over 24. The second integral, when we work it out, works out to be 4 thirds. And then we add those two numbers together. We're going to get 37 over 24. And so that's the total area of this region. So for this one, we're not given a picture. And what's worse is one of my functions is solved for x and one of them is solved for y. So the, probably the most challenging part of this problem is going to be actually getting a decent picture of what, these two region, of what this region looks like and what these two functions look like. So x equals the absolute value of y. We want to compare this to y equals the absolute value of x, which is a v shape that points up. But x equals the absolute value of y is going to look very similar. It's going to be a v shape, but it's going to get flipped over so that it points to the right. So that's x equals the absolute value of y. And it's actually comprised of two separate lines. We have x equals positive y here, which is the same as y equals x. And we have x equals negative y down here, which is the same as y equals negative x. And then we have a parabola x squared minus 6. So that's a uh, regular looking parabola that's just shifted down six units. So that's going to look something like this. And that's a graph of y equals x squared minus 6. All right, so we can tell now that the region that we're trying to find the area of is this region in here. So how do we do that? Well, again, we can slice vertically or we can slice horizontally, and both of them are going to have some problems. So let's start by slicing vertically since that's what's probably going to feel more intuitive to us. What we can tell is that if we slice vertically, there's going to be a changeover point where which function that's on top and which functions on the bottom is actually going to switch. To the left of that dotted line that I just drew, the two parts of my absolute value function are the top and bottom functions. But to the right of that dotted line, the top half of my absolute value function is the top function, but the parabola is the bottom function. And so we're going to have to set up two separate integrals. So let's do that. So let's think about the two halves of our parabola. So we're slicing vertically here. So our first area is going to be the integral from something to something. I'll figure out my bounds in a second. And the top half of my absolute value function, because I'm slicing vertically, I'm integrating with respect to x. So the top half is y equals x, and the bottom half is y equals minus x. So I've got minus x on the bottom. What are the bounds of this integral? Well, we can tell that this part of my region starts at x equals 0. There's my origin. Where is that dotted line that I drew? Well, that dotted line is where these two functions cross. Remember, that's y equals negative x and y equals x squared minus 6. So I'm going to set negative x equal to x squared minus 6. That's going to get me this intersection point. I'll add x to both sides. This factors as x plus 3, x minus 2. And that's going to give me two solutions, negative 3 and positive 2. But this point is to the right of the y-axis, so it has a positive x value. So this point must be, it can't be negative 3, this point must be 2 comma something. And so my integral for my first part of my area is going to be the integral from 0 to 2. The second part of my area is going to pick up where the first part left off from 2 
up to wherever this point is. So that's the x value where my region ends. So where do these two uh, functions cross? Well, that's y equals x and y equals x squared minus 6. So we said x equal to x squared minus 6. Subtract x from both sides. That factors. We get x minus 3 and x plus 2. That gives us two solutions, x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 2. But again, we're to the right of my y-axis, so it can't be a negative x value. It must be a positive x value. This must be 3 comma something. So we're going to integrate from 2 to 3. And again, as we said before, the top function is still the top half of my absolute value function, but now the bottom function is my parabola. So those integrals aren't too hard to figure out. We add them up, uh, integrate them separately, and add up the answers, and that's going to give us 37 over 6. All right, what about slicing horizontally? Well, again, we're going to have to set this up as two separate integrals because now there's my dividing line. Below that dividing line, my little rectangle has the parabola to the right and the bottom half of my absolute value function on the left. But above that line, the this rectangle still has the parabola on the right but now has the top half of my absolute value function on the bottom. So the two separate integrals are going to go like this. So let's do the lower area first. So this area here has the parabola on the right. Now my parabola is solved for y. So right now it looks like y equals x squared minus 6. So I've got to solve that for x to write that as a function that's solved for x. We add 6 to both sides. Take the square root of both sides, we get plus or minus the square root of y plus 6. Now we're not going to need the negative square root of y plus 6 because that's this half of my parabola. I don't need that, that's not involved in my area, so I just need the positive square root of y plus 6. And then the bottom half of my uh, absolute value function is x equals negative y, so I'm going to subtract negative y here. Now what are the bounds on my integral? Well, the integral, they have to be y values. The lower y value is y equals negative 2, and the upper y value is y equals 0. So I'm going to integrate from negative 2 to 0. Now the upper half area, that's this region, that's going to start at 0 and go up to y equals 3. It's still got the parabola on top, so that's the square root of y plus 6. And now it's got the upper half of my absolute value function on the bottom. That's x equals y and we're integrating with respect to y. So these integrals are going to be a little bit more challenging because of the square root of y plus 6. We're going to have to do a substitution, but if we work all that out, we should also still get the square root, uh, uh, 37 over 6. All right, one last example. Again, here we have one function that's solved for x and one function that's solved for y, so it's not immediately obvious whether we should be trying to slice this vertically or slicing horizontally. So again, we need to have a picture. So let's draw x equals y squared. So that looks a lot like y equals x squared is just flipped over. So this is a parabola that opens to the side. And then y equals 1 half x minus 4. That's a line with slope 1 half and y intercept negative 4. So that's going to look something like that. And so now what we can see is that if we tried to slice this area vertically, we would have an inconsistency. So a vertical rectangle over here would have parabola on top and parabola on the bottom. But a rectangle uh, drawn vertically over here has parabola on top and the line on the bottom. So if we slice vertically, and we can do this slicing vertically, but we would need to set up two separate integrals. Uh, by contrast, if we slice horizontally, we don't have any such inconsistency. These horizontal rectangles all have the line on the right and the parabola on the left, which means we're only going to need one integral to do it horizontally. So I'm going to slice this one horizontally. Uh, horizontally. Pay no attention to the chainsaw in the background if you can hear that. So. What do we need to do to slice this horizontally? Well, we need to have the right function minus the left function, and we're going to integrate with respect to y. So the right function is my line, but unfortunately my line is currently solved for y. So I'm going to need to rewrite that equation solved for x. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I get y plus 4 equals 1 half x, and then multiply both sides by 2, I get x equals 2y plus 8. So that's my right function, is x equals 2y plus 8. My left function, that's the one that was already solved for x. That's x equals y squared, so it's just y squared. The only other thing we need to do to set up our integral is figure out the bounds. So the bounds are going to go from this lowest y value up to this highest y value. 
which means we're going to need to figure out the intersection points. So our two functions are x equals y squared and x equals 2y plus 8, so we just set those equal to each other. y squared equals 2y plus 8. We'll subtract 2y and 8 from both sides, y squared minus 2y minus 8. We'll factor, we get y minus 4 and y plus 2, so y equals 4 and y equals negative 2. So this point must be something comma negative 2, and this point must be something comma 4. I don't need the x value, so I'm not going to bother figuring them out. All I need is the y values to set up my dy integral. So now we're ready to go. We take the antiderivative of 2y, we get y squared. We take the antiderivative of 8, we get 8y. Antiderivative of y squared is 1 3rd y cubed. We're going to plug in 4, plug in negative 2, and subtract. When we work all that out, we get 36. So I hope these examples have helped you see a lot of the different cases that come up, can come up when we're trying to find area between curves. So as you encounter new problems, try to find examples that are similar in these videos, and that should help you out.